So I would like to say uh, something briefly, really briefly. In this panel, which we call territorial resistance, productive model, struggles, and alternative programs, we will have comrades from Pakistan, from Lebanon, and from Brazil. And at first, our comrade Kula Bacha will begin from Pakistan, and we would like to also tell you that we are organizing an international campaign in supporting Pakistani people and workers, especially our um, fraternal organization, The Struggle, who are also um, taking forward this campaign. So we, we know that some of uh, the countries have organized collectively in universities, in different offices. For example, here in Argentina, we have gathered in different universities or offices. So we would like to ask you to collect donations in each of those places. Since we are making this um, global campaign, we are expecting around $5 uh, by comrade, those who can make a donation to help and support uh, the Pakistani people who are suffering flaws that have never uh, been seen before without precedence. So now you know we are launching this campaign at the same time. They are also carrying out a solidarity campaign there. So we would like to make our own contribution to them so that they can strengthen their activities. So that would be it for now. So we will begin now the first panel about territorial resistance, productive models, struggles, and alternative programs. So our first panelist, students of the Peshawar University and also organizer of the students, Revolutionary Students Front in Pakistan. You can go ahead, comrade. Thank you. Thank you, comrade. Am I audible? Hello. Puede comenzar. Puede comenzar, camarada. You can begin. Uh, nowadays, it is an undeniable fact that this planet Earth is under severe climate crisis and the 8 billion people living here are being severely affected by the environmental and also the economic disaster. We consider um, the cause of this crisis to be the global capitalist system, the system which is based on continuous exploitation of masses and nature in lust for the profit. On this global emergency, many organizations are showing their concern and presenting different analysis. Even the capitalists are holding global conferences on it but no one tells the root cause of this problem, which is again, this rotten capitalist system. Rather, they make every possible effort to save it. Although all of them will tell that climate change and global warming are due to the use of large amount of fossil fuels, but they will never tell that it is capitalism that is using these fossil fuels in such large quantities uh, in order to maintain the profitability. We as a Marxist consider this Murderous capital system to be the cause of these environmental disasters. Since the emergence of capitalism, the emission of greenhouse gases has increased, which has accelerated the process of climate change. The whole planet is suffering from natural calamities. In, in some countries, due to heavy rain, the floods have submerged entire settlements. And in some areas, these, uh, these are extreme heat. There are extreme heat waves, and the forests are catching fires and burn into ashes. Climate change is a global problem and countries that have very little contribution to this change are the most affected. One of the examples is Pakistan. Pakistan's contribution to contributions to global greenhouse gases is less than 1%, but it is extremely vulnerable to climate change. According to Global Climate Risk Index, Pakistan ranks eight in the countries most affected by climate change, which can be estimated from the recent devastating floods in the country. 
in which one third of Pakistan is submerged. In Pakistan, every year monsoon rains causes financial and human losses. But this year, the rains that started from June broke the 30 years record. On average, 190% more rains in falls in 30 years. But in some most affected regions of Baluchistan and Sindh, uh, this rate, uh, rate rose up to 500 to 800% that caused, caused widespread destruction in the entire country. More than 55,000 square kilometer area is flooded. That is equal to the Costa Rica. The flood swept away the entire village, villages. River, rivers have breached their banks and dams have overflowed, destroying homes, roads, bridges, schools, hospitals, public health centers, and every other infrastructure. Around 33 million people have been affected from recent flood, and 1,500 people, including 400 children, have lost their lives and hundreds of thousands of houses have been destroyed. 110 districts of the country have been affected. Uh, 3,500 kilom kilometers of the roads have been destroyed. More than 700,000 livestock and two and a half million acres of crops are, and orchards have been lost. A million houses have been already, uh, already been damaged and many people displaced. The official estimated damage are around 10 million million uh, Pakistani rupees, but all these statistics are very less reported. The actual destruction is much more than that. Due to the lack of uh, water drainage system and the negligence and incompetence of the government, entire cities have been underwater for weeks and many diseases are born due to this stagnant water. The water has become dirty. People do not even have clear drinking water during and after this disaster, the government didn't provide any facilities to the people, but people are coping with this calamity on their own. The flood has damaged crops on large scale that were uh, ready to be in, uh, harvested. The floods have destroyed 90% of the crops in the affected areas. A major part of Pakistan economy depends on agriculture. Pakistan's economy, which is already in a bad state, will go into worse state after this destruction. The already 47% inflation will increase and poor, and, and poor masses will be affected from this. Although meteorological experts had informed about all this situation, but third world countries like Pakistan don't have any capability to avoid and cope with these disasters. Pakistan's infrastructure is completely rotten, which, which doesn't have the capacity to cope and, uh, with such calamities. Additionally, the uneven and unplanned haphazard development disrupts the already weak infrastructure. There is no proper drainage system, and the passage of water has also been blocked by private constructions. In capitalism, Pakistan is not able to, be, to build an advanced water drainage system. The entire infrastructure had to be rebuilt and it requires a huge amount of capital, which is beyond the scope of Pakistan in present circumstances. But if we look at all these situations, only the poor masses get affected by flood. It is a fact that natural disasters hit the lower classes the most uh, as they don't have the resources to fight with these calamities. On one hand, with the excessive rainfall and flash floods, the entire settlements are submerged in water. On the other hand, people were being badly affected by heat waves recently. The record highest temperature in, uh, is about 54 degrees Celsius in Pakistan. People died due to heat stroke, acute water diarrhea, and gastroenteritis just a few weeks before the flood situation. Due to heat waves, there were, were some deadly wildfires in different, in different parts of the country in which 100,000 uh, 100, native children whose dark trees were burned. Pakistan has more than 7,000 glaciers, one of the highest numbers in the uh, world outside polar region. These glaciers are melting due to the increasing temperature, which is another cause of flooding in the country. Today, the biggest threat to humanity is climate change because one natural disaster after another is devastating for entire human race. The global capitalist system is the basic reason for climate change. There is no planet B, and capitalism is threat to the very existence of life on this planet. There is only one way left for life itself, and that is to put an end to this inhuman capital system and replace it with socialism. Thank you.
Muchas, muchas gracias. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kula. We want to remind you all that we are carrying out a solidarity campaign with Pakistan. So any of you who wants to contribute to this campaign, please contact each party, your reference, any person who is part of the ISL and who is carrying it out, um, carrying out this campaign. And I want to also say that any of you can make contributions in the chat. We can um, send them to each speaker. So everything will be read. You can contribute. So now we are going to welcome our second speaker, Rafik Don from Lebanon. Good morning, everyone. First, we send greetings from the comrades in Lebanon to our comrades in the ISL, and we send greetings to all participants. Capitalism has exploited the resources and capacities of the planet for decades and has largely destroyed the planet's environment. And this great contradiction between the capitalist model of production and the preservation of the environment is one of the most important weaknesses of capitalism in our time. Nothing is clearer than the rule of capitalism in the development of human society is over and that we must overcome it. We know that climate change and the systematic destruction of the environment is the greatest danger humanity is facing today. We affirm that the struggle for humanity and socialism cannot be completely leaving aside the environmental aspects. The Bourgeoisie ruling class in Lebanon is a clear example of how the principle of profit is preferred to environmental security in general. Lebanon ranked fifth in the world in environmental pollution, according to the NAMBE website. This is due to a long accumulation of environmental negligence and corruption. The roots of this problem start from the beginning of the Lebanese civil war through the malicious practices of burying hazardous chemicals and environmental pollutants in the soil and burning forest. Environmentally destructive policies continued after the end of the civil war and neoliberal brutality in the exploitation and destruction of nature worsened. The authority emanating from the war allowed quarries to work half as early for 10 years, which led to the decrease of forest areas to less than a half. And the seas and rivers had their share of pollution as the mountains of garbage scattered on the coast and in the valleys polluted to polluted the groundwater, rivers, and the Lebanese coast. In our speech today, we will talk about four points that contributed to the and contributed to the destruction of the environment in Lebanon and even affect the countries around us. First, the effects of the civil war, the civil war, which lasted 15 years, caused a huge environmental losses. So Lebanon lost more than half of its forests, jungles, and reservoirs in, in the war. Organized and protected militia mafias cut down thousands of trees and sold them and marine life was destroyed by the use of dynamite, dynamite in fishing due to the absence of the state and control. However, the most dangerous thing that the Lebanese environment was exposed to was the dumping of toxic waste on their land. The militias took control of public facilities, the Lebanese forces, the extreme Christian right, then controlled what it was known as the Eastern regions and the fifth top of the port. It was responsible for monitoring the goods entering and leaving the port. At that time, European countries were suffering from producing a large amount of industrial waste, so they decided to get rid of it by selling it to what is known as the waste mafia. These mafias take advantage of countries suffering from security, disturbances or state corruption to conclude agreements that include the sale and disposal of waste in exchange for high financial compensation. That is what happened at the time as the Italian company Ecolife agreed to dispose the toxic waste and hazardous waste and entrusted it to the company Ecolife. 
Jellywax, which specializes in the disposal of toxic materials. Jellywax initially tried to send the waste to Venezuela, but failed. After that, the choice fell on Lebanon, specifically on Nassar Shipping Company, which, as it stated, aims to sell raw materials for industry to the company Adonis Engineering. Consequently, car cargo arrived at the fifth dock, which is under the control of the National Fund of the Forces Militia and with its full approval. Subsequent investigations reveal that the forces received an amount ranging from 22 to 25 million in exchanges for this deal. What is certain is that 15,800 barrels and 20 containers of toxic waste entered the fifth basin of the port of Beirut from Italy on board of the Czech ship Red House on September 21, 1987. It was dumped in many areas, especially in the deserts of Oyon Asiman. Second, Israeli wars. Hours of talking about Zionist aggression against man and nature will not suffice. I will mention some quick points. The enemy periodically attacks Palestinian lands, uproots olive trees from Jerusalem, and builds Zionist settlements on confiscated Palestinian agricultural land and pastures. Armed colonialists attack Palestinian farmers in the West Bank under the protection of the Israeli army. One of their main tasks is to uproot Palestinian trees and burn orchards in, the, in an attempt to force Palestinians to live as a first step before stealing the land and building more settlements. Mucha, muchas gracias, oh. eh, camarada. Thank you very much, comrades. Rafik. Let's remember that all the comrades can make questions through the chat that, that the panelists are going to answer later. And now we are go we're having comrades did it cut? Is there any chance to get him back, Maher? ¿Y qué hacemos? Esperamos. What do we do? We wait. Sorry, comrades. This is a situation that the Lebanon is going through. There are outages. En un minuto seguimos, compañero. Estamos tratando de solucionar un problema técnico. We will continue in a minute, comrades. We're trying to solve a technical issue of the Lebanon comrades. Maher, 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 can you listen to me? The comrade sent his intervention. Would you like to continue? 
in the closure we can he can speak again if the issue is solved we're going to continue comrades In its bombing of Gaza, Israeli enemy uses, uses phosphorus and depleted uranium, which eliminates any possibility of re replanting the targeted land. In the early days of the aggression, in the early days of the aggression against Lebanon in 2006, the Israeli enemy bombed the Jaihe power plant, which resulted in the burning of 40,000 cubic meters of fuel and the leakage of another quantity estimated at the time to be no less than 15,000 cubic meters, which spread into the sea water forming an oil slick with a density of 40 centimeters and spread out to 30 kilometers deep into the sea and was then pushed by the wind, contaminated approximately 150 kilometers from the Lebanese coast to the Syrian coast in the north and deposited a large amount of oil on the seabed. This amount that spilled into the sea would have suffocated the organisms living on the bottom, according to UN reports. Its danger exists if it's not removed to allow these organisms to, to reproduce and, and recover. In this context, we also do not forget an environmental disaster added to its predecessors, which is the attack of the fuel tanks at the Beirut International Airport, which were damaged by a direct attack on July 13, 2006. The amount of kerosene that burned in those tanks was estimated at 5,000 cubic meters. Burning four days, causing toxin and fetal pollution in the atmosphere of the southern suburbs, the mountains of the capital of Beirut. We, the comrade is back. So he's going to continue. Third, the Litani River. The Litani River is one of the largest Lebanese rivers and it stretches 170 kilometers from the northern Beka Valley to its mouth at the Mediterranean Sea. In its large basin, the most important causes of pollution of the river are solid waste, sewage waste from the manufacturing and heavy industries. Continue, comrade. Mayer. Okay. As I'm speaking to him. Third, the Litani River. The Litani River is one of the largest Lebanese rivers and stretches 170 kilometers from northern Beka Valley to its mouth at the Mediterranean Sea. In its large basin, the most important causes of pollution of the river are solid waste. We are hearing the French too. Our solid waste, sewage waste 
from manufacturing and heavy industries, which constitute 50% of the pollution rate. Hospital waste, poultry and vaccine farms, and excessive use of agricultural pesticides, 640 factories, including 330 heavy industry facilities, pollute at high rates along the banks of the river. Thus, Lebanon lost the country's most important natural resource. Projects and studies were established on this river to use, to use it for hydroelectric power production and to ensure irrigation and drinking water for almost half of the Lebanese regions, but pollution caused it to lose most of its developmental function. The repercussion of this bitter reality are not limited to the environment and the economy, as pollution also kills and affects the health of tens of thousands of Syrian citizens and refugees living in villages and areas along the banks of the river. Fourth, the Bistri Dam. In the last 15 years in Lebanon, a lot failed A lot of failed dams were built, which could not collect water because of the nature of the land in Lebanon, as it is calcified and absorbs water in its depths. But the political authority invents projects to borrow money from the World Bank and distribute it to its supporters and affiliates through projects and agreements. The most dangerous of them is the Bistri Dam, where the Bistri area is, con where the Bistri area is considered the largest green area in Lebanon a new water dam that contradicts all studies confirming the impossibility of collecting water. This project had great effects on the awareness of the people, as at the time they organized themselves in associations and campaigns for the defense of the Bistro Meadow. And there were major clashes with the security, with the security forces and the companies receiving the project. A small popular resistance was launched to safeguard the meadow and face attempts to bring machines to it. Thank you very much, Comrade Rafik. We repeat again, all the comrades, I want to ask questions or make interventions, can use the chat, and then we're going to transmit it to the comrades so they can answer them. And we ask the translators, One of the French translators got into the Spanish channels. So please, the translators, please stay in the in the channels. To continue, we have in Mauricio Mato. He's from the Ecosocialist Collective and member of Lucha Socialista from the Brazilian Amazon. Good morning, Comrade Mauricio. Greetings, everyone. I wanted to speak about the depreciation and commercial and mercantilization of nature. Um, there's such a predative model of capitalism towards nature that our countries in South America are being owned. This exploitation was deepened after the Second World War and during the 90s with neoliberalism. There's also uh, illegal mining in the Amazon territories. There is a great example of extraction of meganeso in Ambaba State. 
there's lack of information about this case, and it is a common characteristic of these projects in the Amazonian territory. As it is not known, it was interesting to me, and I thought that it would be good to talk about it. So it was initiated in 1950. The first 30 years, this um, company had a contract with the Agency of Destruction of Material, and it was also financed by the government of the United States, and there were uh, minerals extracted for um, weapon, uh, for weapons factories. So it was also used, it was a material that was used during uh, the Cold War. So in that territory, there were houses that were built with the American model to transport the, for the transportation of the production, there were train used. Those trains were capable of transporting 900 tons of different materials. In 1997, before the contract was ended, the state declared that the material manganeso was completely um, destructed, that there was nothing left. With the deactivation of the mining company, that region has suffered a deep transformation. It went from being a modal region to be a ghost region. And studies uh, that were carried out in 2001 concluded that 90% of the population had high level of arsenic in their bodies much more than what was recommended by the OMS. Similar to those used for the Ottoman Empire to poison their enemies. There were also chemical weapons developed with those materials, which affect cardiovascular system and the nervous system. This population consumed that water that was polluted for 50 years, that was ignored by military governments. In 1998, after the company was deactivated, there was no cleaning of the uh, access of the pollution. In 2002, there were studies carried out by social and environmental impact $270,000 were spent in those investigations. Most of the times, they don't find the fines, the, the companies that were involved in these uh, environmental crimes, and they find uh, legal loopholes to do so. Started in 2003, there were other regulations and uh, made with the um, government, and they were able to make a new contract for the extraction of magnesium with contaminated and polluted great extents of the region. There were tons of magnesium that was um, transported in that region too during those years. Today, it's being discussed to reactivate those mining regions and other practices of other environmental crimes. All the waste was actually located close to the trains.
and A exploração e saque de minério na Amazônia, bem como a implantação dos chamados grandes Exploitation projetos. In the Amazon region and also the development of those projects follow a pattern. First, they are opposed to populations. Second, there are no transparent and there's complete absence of popular control, workers control on those activities and techniques and three, corruption, and four, also, the impact, the social and environmental impact is underestimated. Five, those consequences actually occur and are, are ignored. Six, they affect great amounts of the population of the Brazilian people. And eight, it also um, has as an accomplice the government and the armed forces. Eight, there's also an extensive use of um, social media and media in general to uncover this. And nine, they also affect worker, working sectors and also indigenous sectors of the population. And 10, also uh, through fake promises of progress in health and when working positions, they put uh, sectors of the people against each other, especially those who uh, resist these projects. Forest fires without precedence are advancing in our territories. There's illegal mining projects in indigenous territories. There's a dismantling of the inspection organizations and organisms. The social and environmental impacts are carried out by their own organisms, those of the companies. So it is necessary and urgent to overthrow Bolsonaro's government. But the attacks towards the Amazon territories where they did not start with Bolsonaro. It started in 1984, 1988. Every democratic Fushua government has carried out attacks. Even the PT has followed the same logic of exploitation of the Amazon um, territories. They have constructed, uh, built, electric dams in the Shingo River, more than 40 dams. Most of those projects were not carried out because of resistance of workers and of indigenous sectors. The most significant um, victory was against the hydroelectric company in which indigenous sectors made expeditions to define the limits of their lands. They also confronted hunters, wood companies also. Last uh, the, the last few years, uh, indigenous sectors' struggles have been quite um, strong, and they have uh, faced the armed forces too. They have fought against the building of uh, many dam projects. They understood that it was important to organize and to fight against that destruction so it wouldn't materialize in their own region. So there were also protests in Brasilia, which allowed to also delimit their territories. We found many elements that were also talked about uh, by and were written by Trotsky in the 
um, unequal development tax. And they discuss how to use um, technology of the 21, 21st century to keep resisting and struggling against those projects. It is also as important uh, for auto organized um, groups to be part of this struggle. They do fight against all industrial companies. There are many examples, like the forest guards, the Guachachara people, and in the Marinho state, and the watchers uh, team of Unichava too. Many times there are physical in confrontations, and sometimes those invaders are captured and returned to the police. Bruno Pereira, a Jabara indigenous um, member of uh, the organization that was resisting as a struggle, was also uh, murdered. And all the last of the guardians of the uh, jungle in Marinho was also killed. Due to this scenario, our group, Luta Socialista, we took part in the uh, forum for the Amazonian territory in defense of uh, environmental activists uh, in July. We took part of that um, conferences in which many other eco-socialists and um, environmental activists also participated in. We also went to the UEPA, and, and then we went to the um, gold refinery company that is being built to denounce that practice. Nationally and internationally, we had to stop the social degradation process that allows this mining activity. All those companies also act in Belgium. They are convicted for money laundering. They also act in other countries. This uh, demonstrates the importance of the International Socialist League being the vanguard at international levels in defense of those environmental activists of the Amazonic regions against these uh, barbaric situations. We are willing to fight for that. Thank you so much, Mauricio. There are a lot of questions and I will try to read them out loud so that you can write it down and answer. There's one question that many comrades made. If you could explain each of you, if there exist, if there are environmentalist organizations in each of those countries and if those organizations, if there are organizations that in this environmental matter that understand that capitalism is the main issue, if there are leftist environmentalist organizations. Um, regarding the Pakistan comrades, they are asking if you can uh, talk a little bit about the campaign and which were the measures taken by the government for the uh, flood consequences. And they also ask if there exists any um, environmental activism there. 
and from Brazilian comrades, if you could explain the PT government um, measures regarding the uh, predation in the Amazonic region. And what is the position of the PSOL regarding climate change? What is the, the program they, that they have had? And regarding Lebanon, I insist, if you could um, explain the different environmental movements and, and current organizations, they are also asking if in Lebanon there is uh, any calling for the uh, world strike for climate change in September. Now we have more questions. There's also another question about how um, in Pakistan, that's the country with most, with the most um, artificially planted trees to fight against climate change. They also ask about the environmental organizations. There's also a question for everyone regarding how environmental organizations are using Western terms and none. Which are the positions um, of the environmental organizations about indigenous um, struggles? Um, are the people who are who struggled uh, who took part of that struggles uh, still organized? And what do you think about destructive and productive techniques like transgenics, fracking? If you think that this um, activities should be prohibited like um, mining also, mega, mega mining. There's also another question for Pakistan comrades. I hope that you can write all of this down. If regarding the damages for the floods are the same, um, are those damages the same in Pakistan and back Kashmir? Hay saludos de varios compañeros, compañeras de algunas organizaciones también que están llegando. There are also many um, greetings for all comrades. Para el Líbano hay una pregunta de cómo se relaciona la burguesía. For Lebanon, there is a question about Christian bourgeoisie sectors and pollution there. If there they have any um, proposal program. Bueno, iríamos si les parece bien. Si no hay ninguna pregunta más. Okay, if there are no other questions. There are other questions, but maybe regarding Argentina. So in this case, in this panel, we have uh, Lebanon, Brazilian, and also Pakistani comrades. They ask about the role of the IMF in Pakistan, if they sent any humanitarian aid. 
Okay, so um, if you agree, we can start answering. Uh, we should do so in the same order. If you are ready to answer, and um, the translation, the translators are requesting you to speak uh, as slow as you can, so that they can translate everything you say. Can we start, Kula? Uh, the, our comrade from Lebanon would like to speak. The organizations in Lebanon, there are many But most of them are financed. I apologize for the issues. We're having trouble in Lebanon. Yes, I am speaking to him. Let's wait a minute because there are a lot of Connection issues. We'll wait a minute. So it is reestablished. The comrade from Pakistan fell. Let's see if we can get her back. Would you like to continue with Mauricio? Sure. Well, we try to reestablish communication, Mauricio. I will speak to him. Mauricio, are you in conditions of answering the questions? Okay. So, comrade Mauricio from Brazil. I will try to answer. I don't know if I can answer all the questions here. I will answer the rest later. In regards to the PT policy in the government, I know the governments I spoke about in my intervention about some actions of the governments of Dilma, of Dilma. They built the water, the water power plant throughout the, the Bayou River. But what they have in common in the Lula governments and the PT with the rest of the governments in Brazil, and the score is it is the same model the model of development, of fake development, they want to apply. The imposition of projects without consulting the population, the use of the repressive apparatus against those, those who uprise against the projects. In the points of my intervention, I spoke about the mega projects in the Amazon, the PT government did the same in regards to the position of the PESOL on climate change. PESOL has a position that is contrary to the actions carried out, the actions that take us to climate change. 
for the great problem. He has, a he has an official position that it goes against that. The problem is what contradictions. There is another proposal that is clear in regards to the, the clash, the clash with the oil industry from the part of the eco-socialist collective of the PSOL. But the PSOL as a whole and as a party doesn't have a position that is clear in regards to the to fossil fuels it has a contradiction of supporting action, actions of the PT governments, the governments of the PT. It has a contradiction that we live here in Belém, where the government in Belém of the PSOL has granted the concession for the mining of gold. We carry a protest against that. The government is, Belém is administered by the PSOL. The mining of gold and minerals is illegal in, is one of the main factors of destruction and deforestation and environmental issues. A general question was made about the characteristics of the environmental organizations in the countries. Here we have in Brazil many kinds from those who limit themselves to debate within the framework of capitalism the green, the green economy, green capitalism, there have been, they have been there every time eco-socialism was proposed. To destroy capitalism and a new world order in favor of the working class, the people that are, that are oppressed, indigenous peoples, communities, quilombolias, There are several environmental currents. Another question in regards to the deforestation and the burning, how to change that? We need several measures, several actions to revert. Deforestation of the environmental organisms of the government of Bolsonaro. It is necessary to stop the advance of the invasion of state land, land that belongs to the state by companies and people that take hold of this land. The monoculture and soy has affected the Amazon. We need a policy to stop that. Soy agriculture has destroyed the Amazon and also has, has destroyed another biome in, the, in Brazil. It has been more destroyed than the, than the Amazon. Together with that, we need a policy to an agrarian reform that is agroecological. We need a policy of generation of employment in the cities, a policy that is 
social policy in regard to the populations that live in the communities because they say that there are demands for deforestation so there can be deforestation and agribusiness and the plantation of soy but these demands were created artificially by capitalism it is necessary to say that for those who are not from the country that many people that live in the amazon were were brought there to this region by the military dictatorship as a way to colonize the Amazon. So a policy of strengthening environmental organizations, groups of peoples, indigenous communities, quilombolas, that act there, it is fundamental. Thank you very much, Mauricio. We had some issues with the comrade from Pakistan, but the comrades, we have to understand that they are in a very, very complex moment due to the floods. There are many connecting issues. Another comrade from Pakistan, comrade Awais, will speak to us to answer some of the questions that were made. Thank you all. Uh, I think uh, uh, you all can understand uh, the tragic situation in Pakistan right now. Uh, and uh, the connectivity is very much disrupted due to the floods and uh, everything. Uh, I, uh, uh, if uh, Alejandro or anyone uh, can uh, repeat the questions, uh, I can uh, just answer as uh, much as I can. Um... Perfect. Oh, I see. Okay. Yes, sure. Um, comrades were asking if you could please tell us more about the campaign that you are carrying out and if you could explain which measures has the government taken regarding the floods. And also if there exists environmental activism in Pakistan. Those were some of the questions in also, which are your own uh, proposal, proposals or program regarding this um, climate disaster you are uh, facing? Were you able to to get them, the questions? Yes, 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 I can, I can. Uh, again, uh, apologies from all of us uh, that you all have to uh, suffer due to this uh, connectivity issues uh, here in Pakistan. Uh, the first of all, the campaign, uh, as we have wrote uh, and, uh, and discussed in an interview published on the International Socialist League uh, website uh, earlier, uh, the campaign is basically uh, the revolutionary flood relief and protest campaign. It is just not uh, that we can provide relief uh, or be, um, you know, the, an alternate to the state uh, itself. Uh, so we are managing through uh, relief programs and uh, obviously with the protest simultaneously. Uh, I think uh, Hola has been, have, have already explained how much disastrous it is uh, as the one third of the country is drawn. There is no infrastructure, not at all. The, uh, uh, more than usual monsoon rain spells uh, that was in certain areas were five to eight times uh, than uh, in the last 30 years. So we launched this campaign. We understand that. Uh, the capitalism and their uh, institutions, the NGOs, the state itself, the wealthy people, the government, the political parties, they will never ever understand 
the uh, tragedy that the masses have been uh, going through the 33 million people is uh, uh, affected due to this rain and uh, flood situation so uh, we understand that they cannot they will only uh, make money out of these uh, miseries of the people uh, but we do understand that we cannot let our people alone on their mercy uh, they are uh, poor masses. We have uh, uh, the legacy of the 40 years of the political work and the people know us, the masses know us very well. They, uh, uh, we, uh, we have, uh, you know, the uh, whole this uh, history with us. So we have to stand with them uh, in, uh, uh, during all this uh, tragedy, uh, tragedy that has just happened. And in this condition, even in many uh, part of the countries like Balochistan and the Sindh, uh, the, that uh, the K N Shah specifically, the uh, city, uh, the you know the town basically, small town, uh, our eighty comrades have and their families have been directly, uh, you know, uh, affected by this uh, flood regime. So we are arranging this campaign. Uh, mainly on the medical purpose, because we understand that we cannot make their homes again. We cannot provide them uh, unlimited uh, ration for the unlimited time. We, we are taking care on the medical purpose. We are uh, organizing medical camps. We already organized medical camp in uh, the, the, uh, around uh, three weeks medical camp uh, in the Southern Punjab. We arranged mobile medical ambulances in Sindh. We are arranging many, many medical, uh, situ uh, medical relief uh, programs for them. For that purpose, we are giving them free medicines, free checkups, and free uh, aid to them. And on the uh, part of that, we are already, all those comrades who have been affected by themselves, they are on the ground and they are making bridges, they are making, you know, the stoppage uh, for the water with the sand, with the mud and with the, you know, uh, the cottons of mud uh, to divert, to make sure that the water should not enter in their uh, city. And we are organizing protests uh, around the Pakistan. We are already uh, had protested in Karachi, one of the biggest city, one not just, not one of the biggest city, it is the biggest city of Pakistan, the most industrial city of Pakistan. And uh, we have protested there, we are, have protested in Hyderabad, we are, uh, we are we are tomorrow we are going to have protest in the capital Islamabad and uh, similarly we are on, uh, inviting other uh, social groups social organization in this campaign with this campaign we are making committees on the local scale because uh, on the ground the local people know very much uh, how to uh, uh, how to organize all this uh, aid coming through because people have sp send uh, money and trucks of the trucks of uh, Russian to the flood affected areas uh, from all those areas that are not very very much affected like Lahore, but they are they don't know the exact situation there. The Russian trucks were the, went there to aid the people, but. Uh, they found a certain city, a certain uh, station, and they provided them whatever they have to do uh, with them. Uh, if we consider this situation, right after, right in the uh, after the 15 kilometer, maybe there is very much disastrous situation, and no relief campaign hasn't reached them yet. So this is the uh, uh, our program that we make sure that there uh, there should be. Uh, local committees formed, local people, local trade unions, uh, the other uh, social organization, the student organization, the women organization especially, should be the part of the, this, uh, those committees and pressurize the government institution, pre uh, pressurize the uh, state institutions, the administrative institution to rebuild the, those bridges that have been broken, to rebuild all those roads that have been and destroyers to connect the to make sure the connectivity to make sure the electricity to make sure the internet connectivity so that the relief program reach them on the uh, other side we also 
uh, doing a, a tremendous work with other organizations. Our not, they are not just our sister organizations, but obviously we have certain relationships with them. We are focusing even the women hygiene. Uh, it is the most important factor that the, in the flooded, flood affected areas, uh, the families and the children and the women, they somehow found some old uh, government building or the schools, they found some uh, thing to uh, shelter, but they are not drinking water. They are not eating food, especially the women, because in Pakistan, and especially in those areas, they are so much conservative areas, they are tribal areas, so in those areas, women cannot go uh, open uh, to use toilets. And they, 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 there are certain very uh, disturbing pictures, disturbing stories we are um, uh, going through. And the, obviously, we have uh, launched this campaign providing rations, medical facilities, and uh, more uh, of that. We are also focusing the women menstruational hygiene kits uh, that some organization has uh, donated us and we provided them uh, to the those areas. This is the all idea uh, of this campaign. This campaign was relaunched basically because uh, it was uh, uh, launched in 2010 uh, flood. That was also very devastating flood. 20 million people affected with that flood, uh, if I, I recall. So this is the campaign so that we can bridge the people, bridge the different nationalities together. So that's why we appeal internationally. We appeal international socialists and our uh, comrades in 30 countries, their sections to make, uh, to uh, send solidarity, to make solidarity with the working class and the masses of Pakistan. And the other question like, what is the IMF and the climate uh, movement uh, uh, is going through here? Obviously, there, there are very critical questions. Uh, the existing question, the, um, uh, the, the question of existence is much more, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, much more uh, movement, uh, has much more capacity in it. We already discussing that the, uh, these environmental changes, as uh, the recent report published, that uh, Pakistan is top in top 10 countries that had been worsely affected by the, the climate change. On the average, uh, the South Asian countries, especially the Pakistan, India, and uh, Bangladesh, these people are 15 times more uh, likely to die from climate change rather than the industrial uh, countries like Britain, America, and other uh, European countries. And on that contrary note, there is only 1%, less than 1% carbon emission from Pakistan. So we must understand that the climate issue is an international issue and the international imperialist countries and their uh, uh, capital hubs, they are responsible for all the disaster that has been happening in Lebanon and Amazon and Pakistan and Afghanistan and elsewhere. And on that, the, the other question that what is IMF? IMF has granted loan to Pakistan. It has to grant loan to Pakistan uh, as uh, it has a geostrategic position. Uh, on the true scale, Pakistan is practically a default state without uh, IMF bailouts. Uh, the, uh, the condition in the, the, uh, in, on the ground uh, right now is uh, the state is fighting with each other, the econom economics is crumbled, uh, the political institutions are no more, uh, no, nowhere to see. So in those conditions, the IMF uh, has bailed out Pakistan. But these bailouts uh, are not. Uh, any kind of relief package, any kind of, you know, donations or etc. They are loans and they should have to be repaid. And we know the history of IMF, the Argentinian comrades and the Lebanese comrades and the Egyptian, everywhere we see the International Monetary Fund is an imperialist inter, uh, institution that has to serve the uh, capital at most. Uh, and in these conditions, these bailout packages are coming here in Pakistan Already, every single dollar that has came into Pakistan for uh, debts, for relief, for whatever pro uh, process it has, it has already uh, ex uh, uh, taken out $17 uh, already. So we all think that we should, the left should, the, uh, the progressive forces in Pakistan should uh, reject these loans of the IMF. To, uh, it, these loans have been repaid many times and it should be called out. And uh, during this campaign, this is one of our uh, 
to demand that uh, the, uh, all the international donations, all the international relief that is coming into Pakistan should be made transparent. And we are demanding that all these debts should be cancelled at once. And uh, apart from that, we, these are the certain conditions in Pakistan. There is very much likely situation, uh, the devastation, 90% of the cops uh, and the vegetable and the, you know, uh, orchards in Balochistan and Sindh have been destroyed. Uh, there are no vegetables anymore. A uh, few years, a few, few uh, weeks back, uh, all the potatoes and the onions that are that has been selling on 30 to 50 rupees pakistani are now being sold at 300 to 500 rupees per kg so these are the situation and there are there would be in coming days this situation would be much worse there is already 47 percent inflation rate and with this tragedy with this devastation this situation will get worse and worse and in these conditions, there could be, um, there would be, there must be protests, there must be uh, movements of the general masses and the workers. And with these committees we are forming, with, with this campaign we are forming, we have to connect this campaign to the general masses so that if the movement erupts on a higher scale, we should be able to tackle that movement. It should not be uh, the destiny what has be, been in uh, Sri Lanka, but it, that movement should found some uh, 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 leadership, uh, some subjective factor that intervene in it and transform the whole society. This is the whole scenario. I think I uh, have uh, taken you a lot of time. Thank you. Gracias, compañero Thank eh, you so much, Awais. Uh, there in the chat, you can see the interview that the comrade uh, wrote for uh, and gave for the ISL. So I will repeat once again, uh, we are organizing through the ISL a campaign to send uh, economic assistance to our comrades from Pakistan. You will be able to look up in the uh, ISL website all the information uh, for you to make your contributions, but we will collect all the contributions for each country. Five dollars, five euros. And we will continue with this campaign for all uh, this month. So, uh, comrade from Lebanon, Rapid, are you um, available? Oh, we lost connection once again. Uh, we'll see the... So, our, our uh, translator is also from Lebanon, so if you would like to... Uh, oh, yes, he will answer the questions right now. Now that he has the uh, that the connection is back. The Christian uh, sea sectors from from Lebanon uh, or the Muslim Busha sectors. We we don't like to difference those sectors at all. They are. Uh, they act in exactly the same way regarding the, the issues we are facing. حول الجمعيات البيئية في لبنان يوجد الكثير من الجمعيات البيئية في لبنان ولكن أكثرها ممول من الخارج أو من many organizations in Lebanon, but most of them are foreign. They're organized uh, by other countries. They're quite uh, basic. Uh, they don't fight against the system. Uh, we were able to avoid those machines um, getting into our country. And now uh, the government wants to 
to do something, they want to proceed with these projects and people resist. But um, it is not a struggle, it's a, a daily struggle. I think those were the questions. Good. Um, yeah, yes, there are some questions. Uh, I will repeat some of them. And then if you want to make any um, last um, comment or contribution, you are able to do so. Um, and then we can close this panel since in one hour, one hour and a half, we will uh, have the, the following panels. So I will read out loud some of the questions that were that were made. One of them for Pakistani comrade, I had already done it, but if the damages of the floods also affected Kashmir, from France, we are asked if the Lebanon con comrades can explain what's the origin of the pollution there in Lebanon. And from Brazilian comrades, if they could speak about uh, the measures that were taken after the murder of the activist um, this um, last month, if there was any change, if there was any struggle, um, uh, if also there's uh, any possibility to make a register list of all the polluting companies to publish it and denounce it. Uh, was there any difference between Dilma and Lula uh, regarding environmental measures? And if there was any victory in the environmental struggle in these last uh, these times, or if we need to keep on fighting. Um, there are many questions and they keep coming, but those would be the main ones. And if you would like to answer them and also uh, make a last contribution to close this panel, um, whoever wants to go first so that we can um, finish this panel. Rafid, Awais, um, Mauricio. I can start. Okay, then Mauricio from Brazil. Regarding the questions, after uh, you, you talked about the activists Bruno and Phillips, there were many mediatic media action, almost no uh, street action nor any other. A week ago, there was one more environmental defendant killed in Mareño, in another region uh, of the Amazon state. Just in case, um, regarding the actions and, and measures, they are completely insufficient there are more threats to the environmental defenders in the in the Amazon region. In, regarding the list of the companies that pollute, I I'm not entirely sure if there if one of them exists. I think that would be very difficult to do, but. It is possible because we do know about some particular um, companies. Uh, 
like Coca-Cola company, there are many lists with uh, companies. But I'm not sure if they are all um, unified in a platform. Um, were there any difference between Vilma and Lula? Uh, yes, there were many differences, but that that do not uh, alter the final result. The first um, Lula's government, the first one, there were some advances, but then uh, in the second one, there were setbacks that got even worse during Dilma, Dilma's government. So with Lula's government, they, they took the, the project from the military uh, government. But I'm talking about the second government, uh, Lula, regarding transgenic soy. With Dilma, there were projects for um, hydroelectric um, plants also in the Amazon region. Regarding victories, I would say yes, there were different victories starting from Lula's second government. And they were implementing even more reactionary uh, environmental measures each time. And regarding 2022, if you ask about the uh, hydroelectric project, they said that they would do it again. And regarding the Wuxi sectors, and they're, they're stating that the government would be more um, in leaning, uh, they will lean uh, more and more in, into the uh, right, far right programs. The hydroelectric uh, plant cancellation, though, is being discussed, and that is a triumph and victory. Also, with the limitation of uh, the territories, we were able to. to uh, have some triumphs there, but those triumphs are spread all over the territory. They are not uh, like centralized. There was some someone in chat that wrote uh, about that the capitalist system is the one responsible for so, uh, climate collapse. But we cannot forget that there are tools that do not have to keep on existing anymore in a socialist future, in an eco-socialist future, that the one that we want to, to build together. It's not possible to, to imagine continuity of the uh, fossil fuel exploitation, the poor sectors to, will not be able to bear with it. They are the ones who face the consequences of fracking agrotoxics. It is not possible for us to imagine uh, a new planet 
with, with these activities still ongoing. So, inclusion. I saw also someone in the chat from the Mapuche people. I, I greet you all. You are an example of the indigenous people's uh, struggles. I would like to say at, at last that it is not possible to save the planet within capitalism. It is necessary to build an environmental consciousness, but also an anti-capitalist consciousness. Only with a different system and another kind of relationship within socialism and environmental consciousness uh, can we save the planet. It's not possible to solve Brazilian issues if not uh, fighting against capitalism. Thank you so much, comrades. Thank you, Mauricio, for uh, last answers. And, and um, if you want to add anything, comrade Rafi. Maher. Yes, um, Awais, if you want to add anything so that we uh, finish this panel. Awais, are you there? I think it froze. Uh, we apologize, but they are in the middle of a climate disaster in Pakistan and a structure crisis in Lebanon. So we will go through some technical issues. Comrade Awais, are you um, are you there? Can you hear me? Yes, I'm here. Can you can you hear me? Yes. See. So uh, on the slighter note that I think I have missed one uh, question that has been repeated again about the Kashmir situation. Uh, definitely Kashmir uh, in this uh, right now, Kashmir is not uh, very much hit by the flood, uh, the devastation uh, that, uh, that the country is suffering in almost every region uh, of the so-called Federation of Pakistan. Uh, the question, but there is a very much uh, dangerous situation uh, regarding climate in uh, uh, Kashmir. We have been visited recently to the uh, Kashmir. Uh, uh, you have been seen, I think, uh, our report uh, regarding the national school we held in Kashmir, uh, Ravla Court City, the one of the, uh, you know, the political uh, capital, if you can say. So uh, we have seen that the, uh, the uh, most of the water, uh, uh, <clears throat> fresh water, that uh, is oxygen basically for India and Pakistan that came from Kashmir. And there is very mountain range over there, huge mountains and the huge uh, uh, water channels and the, uh, uh, you know, the rivers and uh, uh, other sources of the water. And recently, Pakistan has diverted two of the main sources of the uh, you know, water flow there. There is one uh, river called uh, Neelam, uh, and the other is called, uh, you know, the Jhelum. Uh, and they have diverted the uh, uh, water route uh, of the uh, river Neelam, uh, which uh, connect, which flows through the capital of the so-called 
uh, independent uh, Kashmir. Uh, it's called the city of Muzaffarabad. Many of uh, you know uh, Comrade Rasha Sheikh, who have been visiting the founding Congress of uh, International Socialist League. He, he belongs to the Muzaffarabad of that city. So when they uh, diverted that route of uh, uh, River Neelam, and they created a, a somehow a dam, so-called dam, uh, to make uh, electricity, and that's a, a Chinese project, by the way. Uh, so they uh, made this uh, uh, dam uh, and stored the water, and the consequences of that uh, storage of the water and uh, disturbing the natural flow of the uh, of the uh, uh, river, this impacted the whole climate uh, uh, chemistry of the Kashmir. The uh, temperature rose uh, by certain percentage and uh, uh, you know the mosquitoes and everything that uh, that that's also um, rose up. Uh, the uh, the Ravla port city has not you know right now uh, they are you know uh, people are on the lines to collect uh, drinking water from certain channels that have been left other, all other uh, 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 natural flows have been disturbed. Continuous uh, pain, a uh, continuous headache. Uh, they have uh, developed certain roads, uh, and within the month, uh, all that road they had developed uh, through the uh, uh, alongside the river, uh, alongside the dam, uh, the so called the so called dam. The, that uh, uh, bridges and that roads have been drowned uh, after one month. So we think that. They are disturbing the uh, natural water flows in uh, uh, Kashmir, and there is a really uh, huge movement. It's been uh, a year and a half that the, the citizen of Kashmir, especially the Muzaffarabad and the Meerpur, they are protesting uh, and they are calling save the Neelam River. Driya Bachao Tahrik, it is called basically. Uh, save the River uh, campaign, they, they have launched there and they are protesting there. But the question is, even though the Kashmir is not directly hit by this flood, and the Kashmir, we must realize that it is an occupied territory, and not by one state, not by one country. It is the occupied territory by the three uh, states, three countries. One side is occupied by India, one side is occupied by Pakistan, and one side, uh, not much talked about, is occupied by China. And all these factors, during this campaign, we saw that we established, consciously established um, uh, relief camps in the city of uh, Kashmir, in the Khaigala, Ravlakot city, and the uh, Muzaffarabad city, so that they can express solidarity. The oppressed, the al already oppressed, already occupied nationalities are now, uh, through this campaign, through our comrades, are expressing solidarity with the Pakistani working class. That is politically very much important and politically, uh, and uh, you know, the, the advanced uh, slogan that even the occupied uh, 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 stations, the occupied areas, uh, working class is uh, joining a hand uh, with the working class of Pakistan. Uh, again, I, I would say that the climate issue in Pakistan, uh, we mentioned in the art article that Pakistan has 7,000 glaciers. Seven thousand, which is uh, like uh, most um, huge reserve uh, in one country outside the polar region, and those glaciers are now melting. And with the melting of those glaciers, one part of the Kashmir, the ancient Kashmir, the, that is called the Gilgit Baltistan uh, side of the Pakistan, the northern areas, are those, those glaciers are there. One of the uh, biggest mountain, uh, uh, I think it's a trend, uh, second biggest mountain in the world. It's called K2. Uh, it, uh, it is located there. And with the melting of those glaciers, those mountains and the heavy monsoon rains, this collectively have destroyed uh, the ancient uh, Kashmiri regions as well. The Gilgit Baltistan is flooded. The Chitral is flooded. 
and all those flooded water with the melting glaciers and the monsoon that water came down and now it has drawn the areas of northern northern province of pakistan the swat our comrade uh, khola was speaking here she basically belongs to that region the swat region uh, it has been occupied by taliban by themselves with force uh, fighting uh, with the Uh, Pakistani state back in 2007 and 8 so uh, all this uh, you know that uh, it is interlinked not just in pakistan not just to pakistan and kashmir areas indian areas but also around the world we have seen uh, tremendous uh, rains right now but before these rains before the mid june there was highest recorded Uh, temperature here uh, in the dadu there was 54 degree centigrade recorded and we have seen that in uk on with the 44 degree centigrade there was heat waves and the people died with that uh, with, with with those heat waves and in pakistan there has been 54 uh, degree centigrade and now all that area is flooded because of the water this is the extreme climate conditions we are living in pakistan and uh, all around the world uh, i think there is a similar situation in australia we have seen wildfires and also in amazon and everywhere in uh, uh, other part of the world. but as well so these are basically interlinked uh, scenarios and the basic reason of that is the climate change that has been exploited the earth is being exploited by the multinational companies in the shape of fossil fuels and the other uh, they are making money out of it and the people of the oppressed uh, countries the people of the poor countries the working class is paying the price it is not the wealthy people who pay the price uh, if they their mentions are drowned in southern areas the flooded areas there is no problem for them to rebuild them again they can build again and again again and again but the person who has spent his whole life building a single house with two rooms that has been destroyed now it will take many lives for of his and his generation to rebuild that thing again that's why we launched this campaign and that's why we should fight this uh, climate change and this is not just the climate change we have to change the system that is being the, the, the reason of this calamities the, this disaster this disaster can be managed the uh, calamities can be take, taken over with the planned uh, inter- intervention pakistan do, uh, doesn't have any planned interventions so they, all their infrastructure is blown uh, even in the most uh, you know uh, the oppressor it is called the city of lahore the punjab if uh, we see the condition of punjab the three hours rain can drown the whole lahore city there is no uh, uh, you know the proper uh, 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 system uh, for the for this uh, water capacity and for uh, to build the, uh, the alternative it needs a huge amount of wealth we uh, the cities have to be take a tear down uh, to build under uh, underground drainage system and the state has not that much capacity we have discussed the imf role uh, they don't have the money to pay their working uh, to, to government employees even uh, other uh, army uh, that is uh, taking uh, almost uh, 30 50 uh, uh, army budget the defense budget and the imf the international debts are taking the same percent of the budget so they don't have the wealth they don't can destroy the infrastructure and the destruction of this infrastructure is being paid by the working class of pakistan thank you gracias gracias okay. eh, y ya para thank you so much a wise in so that we can فينيش رفيق كمير than 1.3 million private we are only 4 million in the in the country every person in the 
the country has a car, use very bad fuels of poor quality. Production also affects pollution in Lebanon. Forests who are, that are illegal, but are, are administered by the mafias, affect the quality of the air. We also have a huge problem. We have a huge quantity of waste. 40% it remains same and only 10% is recycled and then the rest remains on the, on the ground. We don't have agricultural farmers that number is on the low and also that affects the quality. There are a lot of burning of forests that causes smoke and causes a more desert-like environment in Lebanon. Finally, the environmental consciousness was extended in Lebanon when the crisis of waste exploded in a few years ago. The waste got accumulated on the streets due to the bad administration by the government. When it was dominated by the companies of waste, we think that the environmental battle has goes hand in hand with the fight against the system. And environmental issues are increasing day by day. And climate change and the spreading of diseases. We are in a crucial phase. If we don't stop capitalism, try to overcome it, we are coming near the destruction of humanity. Thank you very much, and I apologize for my connectivity issues. Thank you, Rafik. We all know that the situation is complex, and there are issues. The forum was very interesting. Even some comrades asked uh, how to broadcast it. We're, we're going to release some materials about with interventions and the debates to enrich the whole environmental struggle. Later, we're going to broadcast each of the panels. So thank each one of the panelists. Thank you, Wise and Lula and Amaricio from Brazil and Rafael from Lebanon for their interventions. Remember that we're going, we are making a solidarity campaign for Pakistan. We are mobilizing on the 5th for the Amazon in solidarity with the struggle in the Amazon. But especially we want to focus on this campaign because we can send aid to the comrades. So internationalism has to be among everyone so we can solve all the problems in Brazil and Pakistan. Capitalism is a global system. We have to, we have to defeat it and start to revert all the issues.